Hi everyone, welcome to a new day that we come together to pray with sacred scripture. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the Word community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Saturday, November 21st, to do like to divine and to pray with sacred scripture. Today the church celebrates the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This feast originated as a commemoration of the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary's the New in Jerusalem in 543. An apocryphal source recounts that Mary's parents brought their three-year-old daughter to the temple in Jerusalem to offer her to God, as was the custom. Inspired by a priest's vision, they left her there to serve God. This custom continued for centuries. The feast entered the Western calendar in 1585. Today, the feast celebrates the recognition of, of Mary as a temple where God lives. Mary was the temple of our Lord Jesus Christ. She bore in her womb our Lord. She brought him to us and the church Honor her, honors her as this temple of God. She was worthy to bear in her, her womb, to carry in her womb the Son of God. And that's why we today celebrate the presentation of our Blessed Mother when she was presented, offered to God in the temple. For the liturgy of today, we continue the reading of the book of Revelation. So today we will read Revelation chapter 11, verses 4 to 12. The responsorial psalm today will be Psalm 144, 144 verses 1 and 2, and then verses 9 to 10. And we will read the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 20, verses 27 to 40. Chapter 20 verses 27 to 40. So let's start the reading of the word of God for today. In my vision, I saw the two witnesses of the Lord who had been given authority to prophesy. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. Anyone who wants to harm them must be killed in this manner. They have authority to shut the sky so that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. prophesying. And they have authority over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that is prophetically called Sodom in Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, members of the peoples and tribes and languages and nations will gaze at their dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. And the inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and celebrate and exchange presents because these two prophets had been a torment to the inhabitants of the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and those who saw them were terrified. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here, and they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies watched them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
this enigmatic reading today is telling us so many things. First, John, in his vision, he saw two witnesses of the Lord. Two witnesses that had been given authority to prophesy. Two witnesses of the Lord that received authority to prophesy. These are two olive trees and two lampstands that stands before the Lord of the earth. That's so beautiful. That's a beautiful imagery here. These two witnesses stand like lampstands witnessing, being testimony of the Lord. And the tradition of the church saw in these witnesses Paul and Peter. Like John had a vision of Paul and Peter. But also there are some scholars, some fathers of the church that says it could be Elijah and Enoch too. But what beautiful imagery if we say that it's like Paul and Peter. Because Paul and Peter are these two lampstands that stands before the Lord. Peter, the first of the apostles, our first Pope. Paul, the great, the greatest missionary of all. Because of Paul we are here. We have the word of God because he went at the ends of the, the earth to proclaim the word of God. So these two lampstands, these two olive trees that stands before the Lord of the earth. And Paul and Peter were martyred. They died for their faith. They died for announcing the word of God. And it's so beautiful, it says, that from their mouths fire pours from pour for fire pours from their mouth. Like this this fire when they proclaim the word of God. They were entrusted this authority to prophesy and to bring to us the word of God. But they were given the authority even to shut the sky. But also, when their mission was done, when they have finished that testimony, so beautiful this word, when they have finished their testimony, they were put to death. They were put to death. They died for their faith. They died for us. And their bodies were laid on the, on the city the great city that is prophetically called Sodom and Egypt. It's Rome. Rome that now is where our mother church is, where the Vatican is, is in Rome. Where we proclaim the beauty of our church was a place where so many martyrs, so many of our brothers and sisters, they witness their faith dying for Christ, where they shed their blood. The city that was called Sodom in Egypt, city of sin, city where they killed witnesses of Christ. And it says that in three and a half days, people, some people will be refusing to put them in the tomb. But some will be celebrating because they are dead. But after three days and a half, the breath of life from God will enter them again. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies watched them. The victory of the Lamb is, bring, is brought to Peter and Paul, to every witness. So here we say Peter and Paul being this example, but that happened to all the martyrs, all the faithful ones that died for Christ. We all receive authority to prophesy, all, all baptized Christians receive the authority to prophesy. 
And not only the authority, but we receive the role to prophesy. We, we receive this mission to prophesy, to bring the word of God to everyone. And from our mouth needs to be like fire going through people. Fire that brings the word of God. And we will be put to death. We will die for Christ. But we will be raised from him. He will raise us again. He will breathe on us the breath of life. So beautiful this passage today. On this Saturday that we celebrate our blessed mother. The, the psalm today tells us. Blessed be the rock. The Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. The Lord is my steadfast love and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues the peoples under me. I'll sing a new song to you, O God, upon a ten-string harp, I'll pray to you. The one who gives victory to kings, who rescues, who rescues his servant, David. The Lord wants to train our hands for war and our finger for battle. Why? Because if we are, if we are true witnesses of Jesus Christ, we will be put to death. We will be martyred and could be a martyrdom in body, shedding our blood for Christ, or a martyrdom like St. John, a white martyrdom, that we won't die because somebody killed us because of our faith, but it's this small death that we go through our day, when things do not go in the way that we want, and not only the way that we want, many times the way that we know that is right. So many things happen to us that we, that we see there is no right, that is not according to the will of God. Those are small deaths that we go through. But if we are trained for war and trained for battle, we will win in Jesus Christ, like in this testimony here in the book of Revelation. We will went up to heaven in a cloud while our enemies see us. The Gospel of today, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 20, verses 27 to 40 says, Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother now there were seven brothers the first married and died childless then the second and so in the same way all seven died childless finally the woman also died in the resurrection therefore whose wife will the woman be for the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of a place in, the, in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore, because they are like angels and are children of God being children of the resurrection and the fact that he, that the dead are raised Moses himself showed in this story about the bush when he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob now he is God not of the dead but the living for for to him all of them are alive so some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well, for they no longer dare to ask him another question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this liturgy of today, that we are seeing this 
Jesus explaining about heaven, how we are witnesses here on earth, the book of Revelation, how we are witnesses here on earth, and then we are brought to heaven. The gospel of today brings this question about the resurrection. The Sadducees came to Jesus with a test question to make the resurrection look ridiculous. The Sadducees did not believe in immortality, did not believe in the resurrection, nor in angels, nor in spirits, but the Pharisees did believe. So, and Jesus retorts them by telling, by dealing with the fact of the resurrection. The scriptures give proofs of it. When Jesus says that even Moses gave proof of the resurrection, because God says, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And God is not a God of death. God is a God of people that are alive. That's why death in our body does not matter. What matters is eternal life. What matters is our union with the living God. In this parable here of the seven brothers marrying the same woman, it means in heaven, none of the seven men will be husband of this woman. Because in heaven, our life is to worship God. Our life is to worship our Creator, to praise and to give glory to the God of our creation. And Jesus says, in heaven, we will be like angels. We won't be angels, but we will be like angels. What that means? The role of the angel, as we saw also in the book of Revelation, is to bring the word of God and to praise God. Our role in heaven, our life in heaven, will be only to praise our Lord and God. St. Cyril of Alexandria said, The Savior demonstrates the great ignorance of the Sadducees by bringing forward their own leader, Moses, who was clearly acquainted with the resurrection of the dead. He set God before us, saying in the bush, I am the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Of whom is he God if, according to the argument, this case is to live? He is the God of the living. They certainly will rise when his almighty right hand brings them all that are on the earth there for people not to believe that this will happen is worthy perhaps of the ignorance of the Sadducees, but it is altogether unworthy of those who love Christ. We believe in him who says, I am the resurrection and the life. He will raise the dead suddenly in the twinkling of an eye and at the last trumpet. It shall sound the dead in Christ shall rise incorruptible and we shall be changed for Christ our common Savior will transfer us into the incorruption glory and to the incorruptible life. We believe in the resurrection. And again, as the first reading tell us today, we will be brought to heaven. We will be there with our Lord in Jesus Christ and our in God the Father, with all the saints, all the witnesses of our Lord. On this Saturday, again, that we celebrate Our Lady, may the desire for heaven be in our hearts. May we ask our Blessed Mother intercession to bring us to heaven and to make us closer and more united with our Lord and God. Amen.